trigger warning, spoiler alert. Could you please move your arm? You are experiencing a very controversial episode of The Tom Kelly Show. Uh, If you're the kind of person who loves controversy at your family gatherings, but but you're tired of talking about politics, uh, today's show, Airplane Armrest Etiquette, is the topic for you. Uh, And it is. It is the ultimate trigger topic. If you love fighting with your family, but but you're tired of grandpa saying mean things about other ethnicities, but you love the, the spark of a family fight, this is the topic. Who gets what armrest? This is a topic if one person says the wrong thing. This is the offensive topic that you can argue about with friends and family and coworkers without going to human resources. And this is what happened. I'm listening to the radio. One guy talks about uh, his view on middle seat people, and I just started looking up uh, the topic. I've got eight pages of notes here of research I've done over the last three days. I mean, folks, should any podcast talk about the middle seat armrest etiquette for 20 minutes? No, that's why I'm going to do it here today. And, And by the end of this podcast, I am going to give you six theories on how to handle armrest etiquette. I will teach you the post-COVID way that is accepted to handle armrest etiquette. Uh, I will teach you how to avoid an armrest war next time you're flying on a plane. And, uh, And by the end of this show, I will have the ultimate armrest rule that will probably make you all angry totally missed the camera on that shot so first how did i wind up down this rabbit hole uh scary jones of the elvis duran and the morning show said middle seat people are not real people (laughs) i don't know if that's exactly what he said but it's sure how it came off and he's not wrong uh, I, I, middle seat people are not real travelers. I have been a middle seat person myself before I start getting the, the, the hate mail. But middle seat people are generally not people who planned ahead for their trip. Uh, they're not people, they're people who bought their ticket on a discount website. They did not pay full fare. And they're generally not good travelers. Uh, middle seat seat people, uh, if they're not traveling with a friend, middle seat people are the lesser significant other. Uh, they are last minute travelers, and generally, middle seat people are not people with lounge access. And middle seat people, I'm gonna take a risk here. They're generally not members of the Mile High Club either. I have worked on this for a while. I have done research on this. We we should first explore the function of an armrest. Definition of armrest. An armrest is defined as a part of a chair where a person can rest their arms. Armrests are built into a large variety of chairs, such as automotive chairs, armchairs, sofas, and more. Adjustable armrests are commonly found in ergonomic office chairs. Armrests reduce loads on the neck, shoulders, and arms. I probably could have eliminated everything in that paragraph except for that last sentence. There is a medical use for armrests. They reduce pressure on your neck, your shoulders, and your arms. And when you're flying on a airplane flight or if you're on a commuter railroad, um, you know, they, they provide a, a buffer. Now, uh, I will first give you the generally accepted Jim Jeffries theory on uh, armrest etiquette. Jim Jeffries, Australian comedian. Uh, he is known for this bit, the armrest bit, which has become a defining uh, piece of uh, comedy. And he's also known for a great bit on gun control. We're going to focus on, again, the less controversial, yet equally controversial armrest theory. 
I think I have a clip. When you're on an airplane, there's a thing called plane etiquette, and it goes like this. Window gets an armrest and a wall. Middle gets two armrests. Aisle gets an armrest and a little bit of extra leg. The theory is the person in the middle has the worst seat, therefore they deserve the extra armrest. And listen, if we can't agree on this, people, like, the, like it's not even written in an airplane code book. It's not in the airplane manuals. Like, you know that little pamphlet you get in front with the how to use an air mask? That's not written down there. So we have to come up with this rule like, our, like, like wolves, people. We are tribes, people here. We are cavemen. We are cavemen negotiating every time we get on a flight because nobody wants to make pictures of the Jim Jeffries theory. Here's the problem with the Jim Jeffries theory. Um, a lot of people don't agree with it. I ask, what is armrest etiquette on a plane? Uh, Adam Snare, controversial. First come, first serve to the armrest. That means what? It's kind of like uh, you have to squat. That you like. It's like an old radio contest. Whoever takes his hand off the car first loses the car, and last person on the armrest gets the armrest for the entire flight. Leslie Segret, she believes in the Jim Jeffries theory. Jonathan Griffin, Dave Stewart, Angelo Chianfranco, all believers in the Jim Jeffries theory. Uh, Brandon. Etiquette as follows, I am using them. Steve Berger, flaming liberal, my friend Steve Berger, first come, first serve. That is the capitalist approach to armrest etiquette. My friend Bill Getty believes in need. He says the fattest passenger wins. Technically, that is, I don't even know if that's a point of etiquette, but a rule of physics. And my friend Caitlin says, all mine, I don't care what seat I'm in. Uh, my friend Caitlin C says, I grab both when the plane lurches, but let go quickly. If my Xanax wears off suddenly, I try to hold hands with my seat partner, even if we're strangers. Off topic, Caitlin, off topic. First, here is a shocking approach to armrest etiquette. It was published in USA Today, September 18th, 2020. Christopher Elliott of USA Today writes, no one should be using the shared armrest. And he makes these points. The middle armrest belongs to no one, says airline analyst Timothy O'Neill Dunn. It's common space and you should treat it that way. There are no guarantees that your seat will come with any kind of armrest in economy class. It is not in the airline contract of carriage that, the, and the contract of carriage is the legal agreement between you and your airline. It is not specifically guaranteed in your reservation that you get an armrest. You book a seat, not a pair of armrests. And staking, and this is the, I guess, controversial point that he makes is staking a claim on both armrests is a lot like leaning your seat all the way back. It is selfish. I don't know, people. I mean, first of all, how crazy is it that you spend $100 to go ride somewhere, $500 to go ride somewhere, $700 to travel across the country in a chair, and your contract says you get the chair, not the armrests. But the post-COVID theory is, hey, germs are spreading, people. All right? You don't have to wear a mask on the plane, but please don't touch me if you can avoid it. That, 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 now I don't know if that's an accepted theory. That's the post-COVID theory. I believe in the everybody goes to the window theory on airplane seating. Okay, so that means everybody goes to this side, everybody goes to this side, and if you're in the middle section, well, then you go to the right if you're on like one of them nine seat sort of things. I personally believe in the everybody goes to the window theory because I believe that the aisle seat is the worst seat on the plane. Why? People bump into you. Every time your seatmates need to use the bathroom, you have to get up and be courteous and people breathe on you as they move back and forth all throughout the plane.
So I believe in the everybody goes towards the window, person on the aisle gets to armrest. Before I discuss the armrest theories of my Facebook friends, let me give you a few theories that are out there. Uh, there is the Darwin armrest theory. Strongest person gets the armrest, or what we'll now call the Bill Getty rule of physics, biggest person gets the armrest simply because they consume the space. The Darwin theory means uh, I will fight you for it, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, biggest person gets the armrest. Uh, there is now, we'll discuss this in a minute, the Tom Kelly elbow rest theory where everybody gets half of an armrest. And then, yeah, if you're on the sides, uh, yep, you get a full arm to yourself. And middle seat gets two halves of an armrest. So that way they can do this, little chicken arms. Now, this is where it gets crazy. I like this one. The every, so I don't love this one. There's the everybody goes to the right theory, which means then if everybody leans to the right, how, how is the plane flying straight? If we all lean to the armrest on the right, isn't the plane going to tip? I don't like that theory. I don't love that. Now, there's a lean towards the window theory, which is what I favor, which means whoever is on the aisle gets two armrests. Why? Because the person on the aisle, in my mind, has, I don't know if it's the worst seat, but it is the seat where you have to show the most courtesy. You have to get up every time someone goes to the bathroom. Uh, if you accidentally lean out into the aisle, the flight attendants can bump into you. Uh, that's, you know, yeah, everybody goes to the window and then what happens in the middle section? Then if you're on a jumbo jet and there's a middle section, uh, you know, and I guess this is a sign I don't fly as much as I think I do, I, then we go to the right. Now that's a little bit complicated. Um, hard part with the everybody goes to the right theory, we then have the rules of the road theory, which is everybody leans towards the direction of the driving side of the country you are flying to. So in America, you're driving to the right. Canada, you're leaning to the right. America, you're leaning to the right. Uh, but if you're flying to Britain, oop, everybody to the left. Bahamas, oop, everybody to the left. It's a little bit crazy. Anarchy, people, anarchy. The Tom Kelly, everybody goes to the window theory was a little bit controversial. I made a video on it in the year 2016. I will play that video for you now. Tom Kelly broadcasting from the bathroom of a plane. I don't have much time. I am sitting in the front seat. God, this just sounded like a terrorist video really quick, didn't it? Long story short, there's a woman I'm sitting next to who is stealing both of the armrests. She's stealing the entire armrest, and I have no room to sit. My feeling about armrests, everybody takes the armrest to the right, whoever's on the aisle gets both. Or everybody takes half an armrest, so they're really, though, not armrests, they're elbow rests. I need advice on how to get this woman to share the armrest with me. Do I push? Do I nudge? Do I tap her on the shoulder, even though her eyes are covered and she's sleeping? Or do I just stab her in the forearm with a plastic fork? Obviously, people, I am kidding. If someone is stealing your armrest on a plane, you should not stab them with a fork. So, from USA Today, I don't know. By the way, I don't think anybody has quoted USA Today as much as I have for today's podcast. How to avoid an armrest war. Point number one, communication is key. It's such a scary topic because, again, people, why can't the airlines just put something in the little pamphlet? Where's the FAA on this? Okay, we can mandate whether or not uh, there's a, a lug nut in the cargo compartment, but we can't figure out where people should put their elbows. Um, and uh, the second tip is remain calm. And we've talked about my flying anxiety here on the program. Uh, we've talked about my anxiety in general here on the program. Um, USA Today suggests look for obvious solutions like switching seats rather than getting involved in a potentially dangerous altercation. Being civil and polite is far more effective than threatening your seatmate with violence. So I guess USA Today is not into my stab them with a fork theory or the ooh, 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 keep pushing them out theory. Um, 
or ask for help. Flight attendants often must mediate disputes over who owns armrests on a plane. There's no gray area when it comes to moderating them. Airlines sold you a service to get from point A to point B. And everyone has been sold a seat with a certain width. It's your duty to keep all your body parts within the width of that seat, including your elbows. Now, what about people of a certain girth? What about people, what about line, we see, I don't want to fat shame, but what about large football players? The, uh, you know, we're not, again, folks, we're counting on the airline to do things for us when they're not going to do it for themselves. They just want your damn money. It's civil war out here, people. We're fighting a war and nobody is moderating. Where's the government? Where's Biden? Where's Trump? People. You know, it's, uh, okay. So the controversial ending to this show is what do we do, people? Uh, I'd like to see a kinder society. Uh, I mean, I told you the story about being on the plane just a little bit ago, and uh, I had all three seats to myself, and then a woman came and took the seat two seats away from me. Then she started putting her stuff into the middle seat, and then she started pushing her stuff as she was leaning over into me on the third seat, two seats away from her. Folks, we are in a country of animals. We as a species do not deserve to be able to fly. There's a reason why they gave birds wings and they did not give people wings. Uh, We don't have the ability to interact with one another and share the space. Uh, USA Today says, oh, go ask a flight attendant. I went to the flight attendant and said, there's a woman not even supposed to be in my row pushing stuff into my seat when I wanted those three seats for myself so I could stretch out across all three of them. And, 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 and third seat Karen decided she was going to be the dominant person in my row. And what am I going to do? Start shoving stuff in a woman's face? You know, am I going to start pushing my pillows into the middle seat? And I asked the flight attendant to moderate. And the flight attendant went and asked, are you supposed to be in that seat? And she said, no, but another flight attendant said I could. And she did not ask another flight attendant for permission. So what did my flight attendant do? Did she move that woman back to her original seat? Did she ask that woman to stop bumping me, Tom Kelly, podcaster, celebrity, comedian, warm-up comedian to the stars? No. She just said, okay. And then what did I get out of it? I got an extra Delta Airlines biscotti cookie. Yay. So what's the ending, people? What's the resolution? If you see Tom Kelly on a plane, God damn it, I want one and a half armrests. If you're on a shared armrest, you have to share half of that armrest. Okay? This isn't... Star Trek The Next Generation, if you're in the center seat, you don't get to pretend you're Captain Picard. If you're in the middle seat, something has gone wrong with your day, people. And you have to accept that you get one half of an armrest. And if you don't want one half of an armrest, you know what you should do, people? Uh, Book your flight further ahead of time or do not fly with a loved one. Final point, people. Meredith Brady on Facebook gives us a comment that should scare all of you into booking your flights ahead of time. She says, when I fly, my husband takes the window seat, I take the aisle, and we pray the middle seat is empty so we get both armrests. This is what it is, people. Everybody's out for what's theirs. I don't think we've come to a rest. You know what's funny? I think I've done about 20 something minutes of recording on this topic. And I don't know if I have a firm answer. You let me know what you think. You can do that here on YouTube or if uh, on my Facebook page, Tom Kelly's show. And uh, that's the ask, people. Listen, if you like this show, 
Show love where love can be shown. New episodes of this podcast guaranteed on Mondays and Wednesdays on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, and other Tom Kelly surprises across the board on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube shorts as Tom Kelly Show. Show love where love can be shown. Come back next time, people. Hit the subscribe button. Rate it. Do what you have to do. Until next time, people. Good night, New York.